I started at St. Michael's in 1945. As you realize, we just went through a tremendous and horrendous war at that time. And the war really affected me terribly. I hated it. I hated even the notion of it. And uh, going to St. Michael's, all of a sudden I found and discovered uh, men who were, who were filled with joy and men who were so well educated. They were, and they inspired us really not only to, uh, to great heights of faith and and asking questions about our own life and the life of the world. But also, they taught us, and they taught us well. And they taught us really to study and to be scholars. In those days, St. Michael's was composed, the staff was composed of men who taught at the, at the university, they taught at the Pontifical Institute of Medieval Studies, and they also taught in the high school. We loved them. Those men taught us to play hockey, in the days when the ice was very scarce and those men would be uh, up early in the morning we needed to coach us and teaching us all day, we got to love them. That's where we became very interested, certainly not only in the church but also in the Brazilian Fathers. The building wasn't much, but the influence and the friendship of those men was just life-changing. That's where I first started. And I went on from there, of course, is that um, I, was, um, I was going to go into, uh, into an engineering course, but I worked for a few years and I couldn't get it out of my mind, really, the, really the beautiful, beautiful relationship we had with the, with the Brazilians at St. Michael's. They were really, truly, truly friends. As a result, I applied really to be part of the community itself and I went to the novitiate in 1950 and from there of course as I, I, I taught as a scholastic both at St. Michael's High School and <coughs> Windsor and Aquinas Institute in Rochester. I was ordained in 1959. Once again I, I came in contact with St. Mike's and I ended my teaching time here in 93 and I was here from 93 to 2000 but St. Michael's at that particular moment you know it needed rebuilding things were uh, it was uh, it had been built in 1950 and uh, here it was 93 and needed a lot of makeover and so we did that along with the staff and myself and many other people generously coming forward uh, to help me really in the reconstruction of the school itself. People that gave fantastic sums of money, because it cost an awful lot of money to rebuild this place. And, and within seven years, this school was not only rebuilt physically, but it was also rebuilt academically. There were courses added, there were new ways of teaching, we, we may have scrimped on some things, but we certainly didn't scrimp on putting good courses into the, at the hands of the students. The library was refounded, and, and uh, it's, uh, it was just a magnificent experience really for me to end my teaching career after over 40 years, and my teaching career at St. Mike's in 2000. The Order of St. Michael comes from the fact that St. Michael, he's known to us, is the one who defended God. When selfishness and pride crept into creation, it was St. Michael who stood really for goodness and proper order. He ordered everything to Almighty God. And the order of St. Michael does that very same thing. It advocates really God as Creator, God as Father. God is the one, is the essence of goodness. The Order of St. Michael is attempting to say that to the world, palpably say that. Tell the world that here, here is a place where really we become and we see the possibilities of order. When things are ordered to Almighty God, they follow the peace of God. The order of St. Michael 
stands for good scholarship, the truth, and it also stands for the ability really to be truthful with each other and certainly to be kind to others and to transmit goodness. There used to be, in my day, you used to talk about Father Flanagan saying there's never such a thing as a, as a bad boy. Sometimes boys do bad things, but he was right. There's nothing, nothing that stops us from working with the individual. Not to simplify him and make him as a big horde with everybody else. He's not one of, he's not part of a billion people, he's an individual. We teach them individually, we love them individually, we admire them individually, we would like to inspire them to a great life individually. The young, the young need that very badly. They need to know what goodness is. And they need to know that they can obtain goodness. And they need to know that they, when the world does not pronounce upon them, finally, the one who will pronounce upon them is the one who gave them life. That's Almighty God.